Hello, folks and goats. My name is Griffin with the Command Valley Podcast, and you are listening to another Monday Deck Tech. Now, for you today, I'm going to go through the six-fold path of building a commander deck. So let's just go ahead and jump right into it. So step one in our six-fold path of building a commander deck will be, who is your commander? And ladies and gents, today I am excited to bring to you the one, the only, Perforos Bronze-Blooded. Perforos Bronze-Blooded is four and a red for a 7-6 legendary enchantment creature god. Perforos is indestructible. As long as your devotion to red is less than five, Perforos isn't a creature. Other creatures you control have haste. And his last line of text is, for two and a red, you may put a red creature card or an artifact creature card from your hand onto the battlefield and sacrifice it at the beginning of the next end step. Holy cow, guys. As soon as I saw this spoiler that came out today, you're going to be watching a week later. We saw it today. I was fuming with potential. This card excites me for many reasons. The first reason is that we have not seen a card that can do this type of effect on a commander ever. I mean, it has a sneak attack-esque effect. There is no way I couldn't be excited about this. Number two, I mean, he's coming out of a freaking volcano. Let's just appreciate the art for a second. How can you not love this? All right, enough for the excitement. Let's move on to step two. What's the strategy? So the name of this deck, which also illustrates the strategy, is Big Boy Smackdown. Now, what I mean by that is we're going to pack a lot of big red and artifact creatures into this deck and smack our opponents for a heck of a lot of damage. So step number three in our six-fold path of how to build a commander deck is how are we going to get there? How are we going to attain the strategy of throwing red creatures and smacking our opponents for a heck of a lot of damage? I'm just gonna go through this deck in terms of the steps of the strategy, so bear with me. The first step, obviously, and the most exciting part is the big boys. These creatures are massive red creatures and artifact creatures. Remember, it has to be red creatures or artifact creatures, according to Perforus's text, that are huge, that are massive, and that can really drop our opponents down very quickly. On this list, I will just include a few of my favorites. The first one is Akroma, Angel of Fury. A 6-6 flying trample protection from white and blue with fire breathing. Ancient Stone Idol, a 12-12 artifact that when it dies, it creates a 6-12 colorless construct artifact with trample. Avatar of Slaughter, a 8-8 avatar that says all creatures have double strike and attack each turn if able. Dracuseth, Maw of Flames from Corset 2020. Flying, whenever Dracuseth attacks, it deals 4 damage to any target and 3 damage to each of up to 2 other targets. Itali, Primal Storm, our favorite dinosaur. Whenever you attack with Itali, exile the top card of each player's library, then you may cast any number of non-non cards exiled this way without paying their mana costs. Heartless Hidetsugu, a personal favorite. Hidetsugu can tap to deal damage to each player equal to half that player's life total rounded down. Hellkite Tyrant, Flying, Trample, Flample. Whenever a Hellkite Tyrant deals combat damage to a player, gain control of all artifacts that player controls. At the beginning of your upkeep, if you control 20 or more artifacts, you win the game. And of course, our favorite, Blightsteel Colossus, the Trample Infect 1111 Indestructible Golem. Now those are just a couple, there are plenty of other big boys, and honestly you can put as many big boys as you want into this deck, this is up to you what you want to put in. Just remember that put the biggest, the baddest boys. In order to use her ability, the creature must be red or an artifact. The next category in our strategy is Gatorade. Now, you could be asking, Griffin, what the heck do you mean by Gatorade? This is a magic podcast. What are you doing? Well, the reason I say Gatorade is because in a boxing ring, you go back and you drink some Gatorade so you can be powered up so you can get back and smack down some more. So this is going to make sense in a second. First off, we have Berserker's Onslaught, an enchantment that gives all of our creatures double strike. Dictate of the Twin Gods, an enchantment that if a source would deal damage to a permanent or player, it deals double that damage to that permanent or player instead. Flame Shadow Conjuring, whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, you may pay red. If you do, put a token onto the battlefield that's a copy of that creature. That token gains haste, exiled at the beginning of the next end step. Mirror March, another enchantment, whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, flip a coin until you lose a flip. For each flip you won, create a token that's a copy of that creature. Those tokens gain haste. Exile them at the beginning of the next end step. Couple of creatures are Neheb the Eternal. Afflict 3 at the beginning of your post-combat main phase, add red to your mana pool for each one life your opponents have lost this turn. So just envision that you're smacking in with a Blightsteel Colossus, you took out a player, and you have Neheb on the battlefield. Now you are adding 11 red mana to your mana pool to use for whatever the heck you'd like. Tilanali Skin Shifter. 
Haste, whenever it attacks, it becomes a copy of another target non-legendary attacking creature until end of turn. Our good pal Gimli, if a red source you control would deal damage to an opponent or a permanent an opponent controls, it deals that much plus two damage instead. We have Seize the Day, three in a red for untapped target creature. After this phase, there's an additional combat phase followed by an additional main phase, and can also flash back for two in a red. And last but not least, Emmercleave, Flash. This spell costs one less to cast for each attacking creature you control. When it enters the battlefield, attach it to target creature you control. A equipped creature gets plus one plus one, has double strike and trample, and you equip for three. So this category is born off of the fact that yes, we do want to bring in a lot of big red creatures or artifacts to smack down our opponents as fast as we can. However, this category allows us to include cards that will help us do that faster and more efficiently. And our third strategy in this is repeat. Now, when first looking at this deck, I thought, well, what are some ways that we can bring back those creatures from the graveyard that we're sacrificing? And what I've learned is there is a one or two ways to be able to recur them in red. However, what we can do is also blink and copy. First off, we have Cloudstone Curio. Whenever a non-artifact permanent comes into play under your control, you may return another permanent you control that shares a permanent type with it to its owner's hand. So let me go ahead and go through the sequencing with you so it makes a little bit more sense. How this would work is you'd have Cloudstone Curio and Perforous on the battlefield. You would use Perforous's ability to sneak in a Dracoseth and swing in for seven, plus a little bit extra damage. And before your end step, you'd play another creature. Since a creature serves a type with Dracoseth, then you could bounce Dracoseth back to your hand, and on the next go, you can do Dracoseth and maybe another creature as well. The next one we have is Conjurer's Closet. At the beginning of your M step, you may exile target creature you control, then return that card to the battlefield under your control. This card is an all-star in this deck because you can order the triggers to have Conjurer's Closet happen first before Perforos' exile trigger, which means you bring it back to the battlefield, and now that it's a new creature, the Perforos Clause will no longer have its effect. Our next all-star is Nim Death Mantle. Equipped creature gets plus two, plus two, has Intimidate, and is a black zombie. Whenever a non-token creature is put into your graveyard from the battlefield, you may pay four. If you do, return that card to the battlefield and attach Nim Death Mantle to it, and it equips for four. Having this out and having open mana will assure that any creature that gets sacrificed at the end of the turn, you can just return it to the play and have it stick around. Our two creatures I have is Felden of the Third Path, who is a legendary creature for two and a red and tap. Create a token that's a copy of target creature card in your graveyard, except it's an artifact in addition to its other types. It gains haste, sacrifice at the beginning of the next end step. So how this would work is that you'd have Felden on the battlefield and you'd have, for the sake of simplicity, Dracoseth in our graveyard. You would tap Felden to create a copy of Dracoseth and swing for another seven and some extra damage. Lastly, Scarecrow, a 3 mana artifact for 1 generic, we can sacrifice a Scarecrow and draw a card. We're not really worrying about that clause. But for 4 and tap, return target artifact creature card from your graveyard to play. The reason why I've included Scarecrow is because we do have 4 very powerful, very effective artifact creatures in here, and having at least a little bit of recursion for them will be very handy in your strategy to win. Really quickly before I move on to the next step of our sixfold path to Commander, I just wanted to include both the mana ramp and the card draw in this deck for you guys. For our mana ramp, we have Arcane Signet. Tap it to add one mana of any color of your commander's color identity. Number two, we have Cage Sun, a six mana artifact. When it enters the battlefield, choose a color. Creatures you control of that chosen color get plus one, plus one. And whenever a land's ability adds one or more mana of that chosen color to your mana pool, add one additional mana of that color to your mana pool instead. So now you're tapping for two red instead of just one. That is value, my friends. Fire Diamond, our two mana artifact that enters the battlefield tapped. Tap it to add one red to your mana pool. 5 mana Gilded Lotus to tap 3 of any one color to our mana pool. Ruby Medallion, a 2 mana artifact, red spells you cast cost 1 less. And next we have Soul Ring and Thran Dynamo for a colorless artifact ramp. Our two creatures I've included in here are Dockside Extortionist. When it enters the battlefield, create X treasure tokens where X is the number of artifacts and enchantments your opponents control. And Treasure Number, 2 in a red for whenever an opponent taps an artifact for mana, gain control of that artifact until end of your next turn. Next, onto our card draw. I've included a couple in here. The first one I have is Howling Mine. At the beginning of each player's draw step, if Howling Mine is untapped, that player draws an additional card. Mind's Eye, our five mana artifact. Whenever an opponent draws a card, you may pay one if you do draw a card. Skull Clamp, our one mana artifact. Equipped creature gets plus one, minus one. Whenever a equipped creature dies, draw two cards and it equips for one. A super nice artifact to just hitch on to our big creatures that are going to be dying at the end of turn anyway to draw some extra cards. Reforge the Soul. Three red red for each player discards his or her hand and then draws seven cards, and you can miracle it for two. 
Wheel of Fate, suspend four, exile it, and four turns later, each player discards his or her hand and draws seven cards. Dragon Mage, which works really well with our commander, flying whenever Dragon Mage deals combat damage to a player, each player discards their hand, then draws seven cards. Magus of the Wheel, for one and a red, tap it, sacrifice Magus of the Wheel, each player discards their hand, then draws seven cards. Keep in mind, those are not all the cards in the deck, those are all included in the deck list in the show notes below. These are just a few I wanted to introduce to you guys to get you excited for this deck. Step number four on our six-fold path to how to build a commander deck, we have the protection step. Now, red is an interesting color. Our protection is going to be a little bit different. For this step, I have included board wipe effects to protect us from not getting killed by a lot of creatures coming at us, because we're definitely going to be the enemy in this game. The three cards I have included are Blasphemous Act. This spell costs one less for each creature on the battlefield. Blasphemous Act deals 13 damage to each creature. Chandra's Ignition. Target creature you control deals damage equal to its power to each other creature and each opponent. Say that you've just cheated out Dracuseth. Now you can cast Chandra's Initian to deal 7 damage to each other creature and each other opponent. Now that's value! Earthquake. For 1 and a red, Earthquake deals X damage to each creature without flying and each player. Disclaimer. Perforous once burned is indestructible and does not die to any board wipes that are included in this list. Step number five is our interaction for Perforo. Since it's a mono red deck, we're going to be using more damage related spells to be able to get rid of our opponent's creatures. I've included Jaya's Immolating Inferno for Red Red X, this legendary sorcery. Jaya's Immolating Inferno deals X damage to each of up to three targets. Sundering Stroke, six and a red. It deals seven damage divided as you choose among one, two, or three targets. If at least seven red mana was spent to cast this spell, instead, Sundering Stroke deals seven damage to each of those permanents and or players. Balefire Dragon, 6-6 six, six Flying Dragon, whenever Balefire deals damage to a player, it deals that much damage to each creature that player controls. Steel Hellkite, Flying for 2 generic, Steel Hellkite gets plus 1 plus 0 until end of turn. For X, destroy each non-land permanent with converted mana cost X, whose controller was dealt combat damage by Steel Hellkite this turn. Activate this ability only once each turn. And of course, Chaos Warp. Two in red, the owner of target permanent shuffles it into their library, then reveals a the top card of their library. If it's a permanent card, they put it onto the battlefield. Step numero six in our six-fold path is our reflection. Now for this deck, I did make a few cuts after building this deck. I just wanted to bring them up to you guys so you know kind of where I'm thinking. The first card that I thought of when I saw Perforos was Sunbird's Invocation. I brought this up to Lannan and Lannan let me know that this is probably better in a Spell Slinger deck since we're not casting more than one spell. Generally per turn we're just using big creatures and most of the time we're going to be cheating these cards out anyway. The last little section I wanted to include about cards that I didn't include is Eldrazi's. Now you might be thinking, well Griffin, why did you try to include Eldrazi's anyway? Didn't you hear the disclaimer that you yourself gave on this video? Yes my friends I did and that's why I took it out. Now the reason why I was going to play these is because I was really excited to use a card that was unbanned called Painter's Servant. Painter's Servant is a 2 mana scarecrow. As Painter's Servant comes into play, choose a color. All cards that aren't in play, spells, and permanents are the chosen color in addition to their other colors. Now if you did have Painter's Servant out, you could make all of your Eldrazi's also red creatures and be able to sneak them out with Perforos. However, this is a high hoop to jump through if you wanted to include even 3 Eldrazi's to use this card. If you do not have Painter's Servant out, you do have dud cards in your hand. At the end of the day, this is your deck, and if you want to include Page and Servant and sneak in some big Eldrazi's, then by all means, go for it. Alright friends, that is the end of our deck tech for today for Perforos Bronze Blooded. I hope you guys love this deck as much as I loved building it. I'm super excited to build this as soon as Perforos comes out in January for Theros Beyond Death. Please remember to like, subscribe, and comment on our video for any commanders that you would like us to make a deck tech on, or simply any way that you could recommend this deck to be even better. Please remember to check out our other videos. We have deck techs that come out every Monday, and please also check out our podcast version of the show called Late Night Drive, where we dig into all kinds of magic topics and EDH topics. And remember, my friends, please stay tuned for more gameplay videos that will be coming out. With that, may you draw well, may you curve out, and may you drink all the Gatorade in the world. Disclaimer, Griffin does not actually recommend you drink Gatorade. Please drink at least four cups of water per day to keep your body hydrated. Until next time.